Hey guys, in this video, we'll be discussing how to prove trigonometric identities using basic identities. Let's look at the question. Here we have square root of secant a minus 1 over secant a plus 1 equals to cosecant a minus cotangent a. When we are doing proving of trigonometric identities, we can either start with the left hand side or the right hand side and show that it is equals to the other side of the equation. Technically, you could begin with any side. However, it would be easier to simplify rather than to start with a simpler form and make it more complex. In this case, I would say the left side is a bit more complex than the right side. So let's begin with the left side. Let's mark all our basic identity first. Our basic identities, we have three of them. They are cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals to 1. This is one of them. And then when you divide the whole thing by cos squared theta, you will get 1 plus tangent squared theta is equals to secant squared theta. And if you divided cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals to 1 by sine squared theta, then you will get cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equals to cosecant squared theta. These are our three identities. It's very easy here. There's no need to memorize all of them. You just have to remember the first one. Cos squared plus sine squared equals to 1. And then you divide by cos squared. Divide the whole thing by cos squared. And then again divide the whole thing by sine squared. Then you get all three basic identities. So let's use this to solve the question. We're going to begin with the left hand side. So I'm going to start with left hand side. And if we look at the right hand side, when you are doing this question, you must always have the end goal in mind. So the end goal here is to end up with cosecant a minus cotangent a. The first thing you will notice is there is no more square root in the expression. Therefore, we need to remove the square root. And when we want to remove square root, what we need to do is we need to have square root of something square. This way we can eliminate the square root. So our goal is to create something square inside. Let's try that. How do we do that? So here the first step we do is, in this case, you have second plus one, second minus one. What we can do is, you can multiply both numerator and denominator with the conjugate. So here we have plus one. What you can do is multiply it with second a minus one. And so we can apply the same thing to the numerator, or rather we have to do the same thing with the numerator, secant a minus 1. And of course this is still under the square root. We have not eliminated the square root, so the whole thing is square root. Let me adjust this. And let's perform this operation. So now we would have square root of secant a minus 1 squared in the numerator. And in the denominator we would have, so here we have plus 1 and minus 1. So if you remember your basic algebra and your factorization, this is analogous to a plus b, a minus b. When you expand this, of course, you would get a square minus b square. And this is exactly what we're going to do here. So in the numerator, in the numerator, we have the whole thing squared because it's minus and minus. But in the denominator, we would have secant square a, which is the a, minus 1 square. And now we have this. So when we look at this, secant square a minus 1, this is actually, this is equals to just secant square a minus 1. And now it's time to use our basic identities. From the basic identities, where do we have secant square? We have secant square here. So if we rearrange this equation, we rearrange this equation, you will get tangent square of theta is equals to secant square of theta minus 1. And this is exactly what we have here. So when we go back to here, we have secant square a minus 1. So this is actually equals to tangent square a. And now we can just substitute that back in. This will be equals to. So we have secant a minus 1 square over 
tangent square a square root now of course we have square in the numerator and denominator so according to the law of indices we can take out the power so we can just write this as write this as second a minus 1 over tangent a square because they are both square both the numerator and denominator are square and square root and now you see we have successfully eliminated the square root what we are left with here is this will be equals to whatever is inside which is second a minus 1 over tangent of a and now we can start working to our final form we have successfully eliminated the square root and now we need to get let's look at our final answer again we are supposed to get cosecant and cotangent so let's try to see what we can do with this from here you can already see how to get the cotangent the cotangent is quite clear we have one in the numerator we have tangent in the denominator so let's split them up let's split the fraction so this will be equals to second a over tangent a minus 1 over tangent a 1 over tangent a is equals to cotangent a and so we've already reached one part of it so this will be equals to minus cotangent a now let's deal with second a second a and tangent a can be written as second a is actually 1 over cosine of a, 1 over cos a, tangent a is written as sine of a over cos of a. So now we are going to apply this into our equation here. You will get 1 over cos sine of a over sine of a over cosine of a. So we have over cosine of a over cosine of a. This will be eliminated. And what we have here is 1 over sine of a minus cotangent a. And of course, 1 over sine of a is equals to cosecant. So we have cosecant a minus cotangent a. And this is the right hand side. Therefore, we have proven it. And this is how we use basic identities to prove trigonometric identities. If you've learned something from this video, guys, do hit that like button. Really does help the channel a lot. Thank you very much for doing that. If you do enjoy videos like this, subscribe because I'll be producing at least one video a week. See you guys in the next video.